Hello and welcome to Code Pro and to part two of the Protocols and Delegates tutorial series. In this tutorial, we are going to be learning how to implement our own delegates and understand the delegation design pattern. If you haven't viewed part one of this tutorial, I suggest you tap the info card above to go and watch that before starting this one. So what exactly is a delegate and what exactly is delegation? A delegation is simply a design pattern where one object will act on behalf of another object or one object can delegate out behavior to another object that can, becomes the delegate of that particular class. And um, a great way to demonstrate this, or see this being demonstrated in action, is on the UI table view. So as we examine the UI table view delegate, we notice right away that it's a protocol. And if, we, if you remember from part one, you know that a protocol is simply a blueprint that defines functionality that a class structure and enumeration has to implement that conforms to this protocol. You'll notice that it inherits from the NS object protocol and the UI scroll view delegate protocol as well. So as we go through a lot of these methods here, you'll see things such as will display cell or header view or did end displaying cell or did end displaying header view. And this allows any delegate that implements this protocol to respond to changes um, in maybe the state of the cell is about to be presented. Uh, you might want to do something versus the cell just ended displaying maybe clean up some resources. Uh, another very popular one is height for row at index path, which allows the conforming class uh, to say, okay, this table cell is going to be this height defined by the float value that is returned here. Uh, another really popular one is when we make a selection on a cell and we can get that selection notification on did select row at index path. And there's a lot of other methods in here too that are worth checking out that might add some you know, customization for your table view based on what you're trying to do. Now to see this in action, let's jump into an example. So open up a new Swift playground, and we're going to use our game example from the previous tutorial kind of as our model here. So the very first thing we're going to do is we're going to define uh, a couple of protocols. Um, and the first protocol is going to be our actual delegate protocol. So we're going to be making a game engine, and we're going to be making what's known as a game engine delegate. And it's going to look something like this. Protocol, game engine, delegate. And it's going to have basically three methods. Funk did start game. Funk did add player. And don't worry, we're going to implement the player protocol and funk did end game. So these three methods right here are what any conforming delegate is going to have to implement to be updated for state changes in the game, such as, such as adding players when the game starts and then when the game ends. So kind of reusing some of the themes from the previous tutorial, uh, let's go ahead and build out our player protocol. So protocol player protocol. And we'll go ahead and say that it has a name. Any, any base player has a name, has hit points, has a type, which we're going to define in a minute, minute as a player type, and finally has an initializer that says you are going to inject in all of these uh, dependencies for this protocol. And we need to go ahead and define what a player type is. And in this example, it's going to be an enumeration called player type. And we're just going to use two types. We're going to have an enemy and a hero. So we'll have a case for an enemy and a case for a hero. Or I guess you could call that our main player. Let me make sure I have that spelled right here, and it looks like we're good. So we have our, our base kind of blueprint defined so far for what we want to do here, and uh, let's just go ahead and move forward and implement um, this player protocol. And what we'll do is we'll start off with um, a, an enemy. So we'll have a struct that's an enemy that conforms to the player protocol. And you'll see that we're going to go ahead and have to implement these methods that the player protocol says we have to implement. So let's let it fill the stubs in for us. And then we can just be like self.name equals name. 
self dot hit points equals hit points and self dot type equals the type. And uh, even though we're not going to use this just to differentiate this as an enemy, I'm just going to say that uh, an, uh, an enemy struct has a, a basic attack. And we'll just say it returns five damage, something, something very small and, and uh, minuscule, and make sure that returns an integer. So, so far, so good. Um, we have our enemy. And now we're going to do one more for the hero, and we should be mostly set up uh, to implement our delegate example. So uh, let's do another struct, main player, and it'll also conform to player protocol. And uh, we're basically just going to copy and paste uh, this uh, implementation from above. Uh, we're going to just change the, the type of attack. We're going to say that our main player does something a little bit different. Um, in his example, he's going to implement a, um, how, how, what should we call this, a uh, hero or a hero attack. And we'll just say that that returns 10 damage, a little bit more. So our hero is a little bit buffed up. Um, and uh, now let's move forward here. So we have our structs, we have our enemies, we have our delegate protocol, and everything pretty well defined. So now we want to basically make a game engine, a very basic game engine. This game engine is not going to do anything fancy, but we're going to start by defining it like this. So we'll create a new class called Game Engine. And we're going to say that this uh, game engine has players. So we're going to have a private var players. And they're going to be of type player protocol. We don't care what the type is because the protocol will tell us the type. So we can be a little bit generic here and just say that it is a player protocol. Any protocol we have, we can identify the type and get information about that particular player. So that's fine. Now, the uh, interesting part comes next, and that's going to be the delegate. So we're going to find another property called delegate. So var delegate, and it is going to be of type game engine delegate, or the protocol that we had defined above. And I'm actually going to copy that and uh, bring it down here just so we can see it in context with our actual game engine. So let's do that right here. And uh, you'll notice right away that it is an optional. It is optional because it doesn't necessarily need to be implemented or by any other class. No other class may end up becoming the delegate of the game engine, therefore it should be marked optional here. Um, so, so far so good. Uh, let's go ahead and define a few more methods here. So we're going to have a start game. So for our game engine, we're going to say that we can start the game loop. We are also going to say that our game engine can have the ability to add a new player. So we'll add new player of type player protocol. We are also going to say, hey, our game can or our game engine can remove all the players. And now let's make one more class, and that's going to actually be our main game. So class main game. And what we're going to say here is that our actual game is going to contain the game engine. So we're going to have a private var game engine which equals a new instance of game engine. And then we're going to have an initializer for our main game uh, instance. And in our initializer, we're going to do something here that is uh, important. So we're going to say that our game engine has that delegate property, right? And we're going to say, OK, well, I want my main game, this class here, to be the delegate of this game engine. And I do that by doing this. I say the game engine dot delegate equals self. Self meaning main game. So main game has just become the delegate for the game engine. And right away you're going to see that we're going to get some errors here saying that we don't conform uh, to the, um, the delegate because we have not conformed to the protocol. And what we would want, would want to do is create an extension on main game and it's going to be game engine delegate, which conforms to that protocol. 
And now we have to implement or respond to any changes in the game engine here. So the main game has is is it, the game engine is delegating those responsibilities to the main game. And it looks like Xcode doesn't want to auto-generate subs for me, so it looks like I'm going to have to do it by hand here. So um, I'm going to need a did start game. I'm going to need a uh, what was it, the other ones here? Did add player and did end game. So did add player and uh, let's see here a did end game. And you can also something to realize here. Although I did this in extension, this is just a kind of a swift um, best practice. Usually when you're implementing or conforming to protocols, you do them in extensions. I could have easily done it up here at the class level, um, but just kind of following those best practices, I'm doing it in an extension like this to keep all of this functionality separate and isolated um, relative to anything that we might want to do in the main game. So, so far so good. Um, let's go back to our main game here and actually do some things um, to get everything going. So we've assigned the delegate, so far so good, and what we want to do next is actually start the game. So we'll have a function called start, and we also want to have a way to end the game. So we're going to have another function called end. So func end game. And when we start the game, we are going to uh, call game engine, and if you remember from up here, we have a function here that we still need to fill out called start game loop. And when we call start game loop, um, there's a lot of things that we could do. However, for the sake of simplicity, all we're going to do is say, hey, delegate, wherever you are, uh, the game started, so you better call did start game. And right away, you're going to see that if we come down in here, once we actually initialize this and run it, and we put a print statement in here in our game engine delegate, the game has begun. That'll get called right away. And that will get called because of this assignment right here, where we have just set up that delegate, delegate, delegation relationship. So let's go back up to our uh, start here and add some players to the game. So what we'll do here is a game engine dot add new player. And uh, we're just going to do, um, a, we'll start off with the main player, so a main player. And we'll just fill in some properties here. Um, main player, give him 100 hit points, <clears throat> and we'll just say he is a hero type. And we'll add two more. These will be enemies. And so I'm just going to copy paste this real fast. And we'll call this one enemy one. We'll give him 40 hit points, and we'll change his type to an enemy. And we'll call this one enemy two. And we'll give him 60 hit points and we'll call him an enemy type. And so once we've, once we've, so, so we've, we've informed our delegate that the game has started, but we need to also inform our delegate when we add a new player to the game. And we, if we go back up here to our actual add method here, even though we're not doing anything complicated in our game engine, we can tell our delegate, hey, delegate, we've added a player to the game, so did add player, and we'll just pass back that player that we just added in case the delegate needs to know something about that player. So if we scroll back down to our actual delegate here, here's the main game, we can say, okay, print player named of type. was added to the game. And so anytime we add a player, our delegate will be notified of that, and he'll even know the kind of player that was added and can react to it if necessary. And then finally, we also just want to have the ability to end the game. Uh, so when we call end game here, we're simply going to tell our game engine to uh, remove all the players. So what we'll, what we'll do here is call game engine dot remove all players. And that'll simply do this, uh, players dot remove all in the game engine, and it'll tell the delegate, hey, the game ended. Do something about it. So that responsibility has been delegated off from the engine down here to the main game. So we can just simply do a print, 
the game has ended. Now, in a, a real life scenario, uh, what would end up happening is, let's say you, maybe you have user interface pieces that you want to show for when the game ends, right? Maybe you want to display a label, a view, a title. Same thing for when you start a game. Maybe same thing for when you add players. So by delegating that out to the main game, or any other delegate for that matter, they can go ahead and respond to those changes and do things that need to be done um, in, in, in reaction to the state of what's going on in that game. One thing we need to make sure that we do here is actually add our players to the collection here. So I forgot to do that, but we'll do um, players dot append player. And this is in the add new player method of the game engine right before the delegate gets notified of the change in the collection. Now let's actually go ahead and run our game. So we'll do this by uh, creating a new instance of main game. Let main game equals main game. Main game dot start game and main game dot end. And let's look at the logs. So our, our playground ran, and you'll notice the first thing that gets printed out, and I know this might be kind of small to read, is the game has begun. So the game has begun, we got the delegate call here, and then we get calls for every uh, player that we added. So player named main player of type hero was added to the game. Main player named enemy one of type enemy was added to the game, and enemy two. Finally, when we ended the game, the delegate got called here saying, that the game had ended. And that's delegation in a nutshell. Um, it's pretty simple to implement once you understand the fundamentals of what's going on and how a class can act as a delegate for another class and respond to things that change and have responsibilities to handle those changes if they do occur. And it's very powerful. You can use it in your code. It provides a lot of uh, modularity, reusability. Uh, it works really well for custom controls when you're implementing things from scratch, like a custom UI view that maybe has, uh, you know, like a form and, and, and other custom controls that maybe you draw programmatically and you wanna have a delegate that can provide updated information um, if necessary, then this is really, really useful to implement in that kind of scenario. And that wraps up this tutorial. If you found this tutorial helpful, let me know. Go ahead and smash that like button and consider subscribing to Code Pro to stay up to date for all the latest tutorials. And follow Code Pro on social media, the links are in the description. And thank you so much for stopping by, and I'll catch you in the next one.